Coach Fratt here, back with a quick update. I saw that First just posted out something new for the advancement on the First Championships and how they deal with the new, how teams are going to advance from uh, qualification matches to regional matches to the First Championships or to Premier Event. I thought I'd make a quick video detailing how these changes might affect you uh, for the next season. I'm Coach Pratt. I've been teaching robotics for over 10 years now. I work in the Benelux region and I've taught teams to be national champions there as well as multiple Inspire Award winners. So today we're going to talk about how this, these changes might impact your team moving into uh, next season for the 2025-26 into the deep, or not into the deep, into the decode season. The first thing that's the biggest change is that they're going up 31% from the other teams that are now able to go to the championships. So that is awesome. This year, 256 teams went to the world championships next season over 336 teams, or not over 336 teams we can be able to make the world championships which is awesome to see uh, it's great to see the first have taken feedback from teams from coaches from mentors and the community and trying to get more students involved in high level events one of the big things about first is you know it's for the inspiration of robotics science technology or is it robotics but effectively it is for inspiration of these students in these kind of stem fields and getting more students into high quality play is fantastic. Oh, by the way, I'm in a bit of a, this is a quick video. I'm in a bit of a hotel room right now. So <laughs> I'm just recording this quick uh, as my first thoughts go through. It's awesome to see more high level competition come up. They're also going to add in more premier events as well, it seems like, uh, which is really cool because there was a lot of premier events that came up this year and having more high quality events is great especially when they've moved away from sort of scrimmage-based match for a lot of teams, at least in Benelux, you have one scrimmage, you have one qualification match, you have your uh, national championships, and that's it. So it's entirely possible that you spend 12 weeks building this robot and you only get to use your robot three times. So to be able to have more teams advancing is huge. Uh, let's see what else did they take a look at. It looks like they want to have eight to eight and a half percent of their teams to be able to move on to more of these uh, advanced opportunities. So if this year, I believe there's roughly 9,000 teams next year for the decode season, they're projecting almost 10,000 teams. So they want to have about 800 to 850 teams to be able to go to these world championship events or these premier events. That is great. And it's awesome to see that FTC continues to grow. And uh, it's no surprise uh, especially with the level of competition, as well as the relatively low bear of entry that there is to FTC, that they're allowing more teams. Now, some people might bring out their salt and say, hey, you know, FRC had 601-ish, 600-ish teams, as far as I'm aware, at the first championships this year. And yeah, that may be true. FTC may be paying second fiddle a little bit there, but there's a pretty huge benefit Right? And in reality, is we're up 31%. So that's pretty hard to top. So that is awesome to see. I love seeing that they're getting more people in. Next is a pretty big section on their advancement model. If you're familiar with the FRC or the First Robotics Championship advancement model and how they kind of do ranking points, this is now where FTC is moving towards. Let's talk about what the advancement system actually means. So rather than in the current advancement system that was for the into the deep season, and I believe also for the center stage season, uh, if you won the Inspire Award, you were able to go. After the Inspire Award, then it was first place captain, then Inspire Award second, and then a winning alliance partner, and so on. So there was a, a very clear delineated this, if you win this section, you get to go. But now you are now moving on to uh, your regional tournaments, your national tournaments, your super qualifying, your regional, depending on what your specific region has, you're now moving up based on advancement points. So, and you can get advancement points during the qualification rounds. So those are during those initial matches at your meet where you have, you play six, you play eight, depending on how big that first meet is. And those kind of round robin tournaments, you gain points based on your qualification ranking. If you are an alliance captain, or depending on when you are accepting in those alliance selections, you get points for that. In the playoffs advancement, how well you do, as well as the team judged awards. 
And those ones are now visible for teams when they actually go through, which is great to see. So it's very familiar to FRC, but they seem to have done, at least at first cursory glance, a pretty good job of judging where you should be for FTC. So let's talk about how those points actually end up breaking down. For the qualification rounds, you get 16 points max. Uh, at the end of qualifying matches, the top ranking team will receive 16 points and the lowest receives two. So that you fall into point distribution. It's going to be interesting to see how this qualification round performance works if, say, there's 24 teams in those qualification matches as opposed to just 16 in the scrimmage ones. My assumption would be the top team would get 16 and then they'll kind of block them. And that there'll probably be more specific coming up in the investment model. But you can't get 16 points, but it's not worth as much as the Alliance Captains and Draft Order acceptance. So this one is a little bit different. So the points are awarded at the end of Alliance selection, and you get points depending on where you are. So advancement points for both those categories are calculated by subtracting your Alliance number from 21. So if you are on team number one, regardless of whether you are captain or not, if you're on that team, you would have 21 minus one point because your line's 21 minus your alliance number. Whereas if you're on the sixth team, you're going to have 21 minus six. I think that's a great way of going about it. It doesn't require as hard of a push to be a captain anymore. I know that's a big one. And it's also a big point of controversy when it comes to alliance selection. And sometimes what can happen is, especially in this qualification rounds, if you get really favorable round robin picks, you can be more likely to be an alliance captain. And then being that captain with choosing a team who may have been outperforming you but had worse rankings, uh, it can affect how that moves. So it's really nice to see how those advanced points aren't necessarily related to who is specifically the captain. What's more important is the team that you create. And that also comes back to me, at least, that more kind of community atmosphere, that more community aspect. I think that's really important to look at as to it's, it's a team event. It's a team sport. And being that captain is near as important. So you're not going to get those aspects, I don't think, as much. Uh, and we'll see where time plays out. But you may not have those issues where you have a, a second, third, or fourth alliance captain not choosing to be with an alliance above because they would prefer to be a captain themselves simply for that reason. And I think that's a good, that's a good change to move. Uh, so when it comes to playoff advancement, it looks like 40, 20, 10, 5, or 0 points, depending on how far you move into those playlists. First place is 40, second place is 20, third place is 10, fourth place is 5, and everything below fourth place is 0 points. So there's quite a few points that you can get just based off of your performance. So just as imagination, if you are the top performing team, you could get 16 points for being the top place team. For being on the top alliance captain, you get another 20 points, that's 36. And then being the winner there, that is 76 points that is possible if you have the absolute best robot in the competition, which is pretty solid. And then when it comes down to judge awards, you can get maximum 60 points. For the Inspire award, it looks like Inspires are 60, 30, and 15 respectively. And uh, all the other awards get 12 points, 6 points, 3 points, depending on if your region gives out a first, second, and third point award. Some regions don't give out third places. Some regions only give out first and second. Some regions only give out first. It kind of depends on how large your region is. But that does mean that the maximum points value for your robot is 76. The maximum point values for a judged award is only 60. Overall, I'm pretty happy with those shifts. I think that's a pretty good way of screwing it. Because first, again, is about developing engineering students. It's about developing students to get them into STEM, get them to robotics, get them into science, technology, engineering, mathematics fields. And by spreading out the love, so to speak, uh, and giving more points to the robot award, which sometimes can be a little bit devalued, in my opinion, in previous years, uh, and giving a little bit more points to some of these judge awards, as well as, especially with these alliance captains, rather than just being all based around that captain, that's now based around the alliances. Uh, in my opinion, that is a fantastic choice. 
So then first, Neil comes down to talks about why they made decisions as well as where they think they go. One of them is that about 10%-ish of the Winning Lions captains and Inspired Board winners wouldn't have advanced, which is not terrible. Now, it does mean, you know, some of these teams that do deserve to go may not likely. However, even though you may be losing about 10%-ish of those, we kind of talked a little bit about that and alluded to a bit, you know, when you have a team that gets a really favorable alliance inside that alliance uh, captain because they may have had more favorable round-robin picks in those qualifying matches to be able to be that alliance captain. It can change how those things move up a bit. But for the win lines picks, you go about up 5%. Advancement for finalist alliance members goes up almost 22%, which is pretty huge. First place team judge awards, not Inspire, goes up an additional 8%, which is awesome. If you want to get further into nitty gritty, it looks like they get even further down here inside this PDF. I'll leave the link to this championship update down below. But I'm curious what your thoughts are. Uh, What do you think about these uh, new advancement procedures? Do you like them? Do you not like them? Obviously, you know there's going to be pluses and minuses to them. How do you think that's going to shape out this season? And where do you think things are going to go uh, in the future for that? Personally, I'm a big fan of these updates. Uh, I think that it's going to make more teams a little bit more well-rounded, more likely to focus on more things about the robot rather than just gunning so hard for the robot or rather than gunning super hard for just one award, uh, it does make it more likely that, hey, you can be more well-rounded, you can focus on a lot of different awards, uh, and you still get chances to uh, advance. So for instance, if you're like second place for a Connect Award, one of the big things that can happen is the teams get really bummed out that they end up not getting the Inspire Award because they uh, have the perception that the other awards don't really matter. Uh, And by getting almost 12 points for a first place in a different award, that's almost the same as being the first point first place inside that qualification round or being the top four robots. So I think that's going to make teams focus a little bit more on awards and be a little more excited about winning other awards because it does add to their total point score as opposed to just always trying to be disappointed or not trying to be disappointed, but feeling as if they're disappointed for not getting the Inspire Award winner. So again, super quick update video here about it. Let me know your thoughts on this in the comments down below. And best of luck out there this next season.